I fish this area, the same area, day after day after day, year after year after year. I mean, for 30 years, I've done nothing but walk this ground out here. Uh, I'm Chuck Nizer, and I'm with uh, Flatsworthy. Well, when I first learned about Flatsworthy, it was really more of a, of a respect for each other kind of issue. It was, it was a movement to try to uh, bring civility uh, back to the bays. I mean, obviously we have to respect the resource if we expect to have it around much longer. And, and since we all have that common goal, uh, I, I believe it's just incumbent upon all of us to embrace this, 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 uh, this courtesy movement, not just for each other, but for, for the resource itself. The changes come about as a result of, of erosion, which is a natural deal. All, all of the things that are wrong are not man-made. <laughs> They're not. I mean, we contribute to them, and that's what Flatsworth is about, is to try to cut down on that contribution by man to the decline of this stuff. But erosion, nothing ever stays the same. It gets better or it gets worse. And, and so what I'm seeing is, in terms of vegetation, it's getting worse. Aquatic plants not only stabilize bay bottoms and reduce turbidity, they also promote clear, fishable water. Prop scars can take years to recover, if ever. They fragment and shrink seagrass meadows, which reduces fish survival. Running a boat along shorelines or cutting across seagrass flats simply for convenience can destroy vegetation and hasten erosion. Taking an airboat over grass islands and wet ground kills marsh plants and creates breaches that lead to erosion and marsh fragmentation while potentially altering the natural hydrology of a marsh. These marshes and seagrass beds are essential for healthy fish populations and maintaining our world-class fishery requires that we promote the health of these sensitive plant populations so they can better withstand the destructive forces of nature. An increase in the depth of the water can alter the rate of sunlight penetration, which is essential to the survival of certain species. The amount of time a plant is inundated by water can also affect its survival. I think the most dramatic change is the decline of some of the more important species of vegetation. Spartina, Salicornia, the wolfberries, uh, you know, just go right on down the line, halidulli grass, turtle grass. Uh, the grasses are so key and fundamental to the integrity of this resource. They are what keeps it intact. They're havens for bait. They produce clear water, and it just goes on and on and on and on. And you cannot have San Jose Island without vegetation. It's just going to be a big sandbar. Resource problems are seldom the result of a single factor. Usually, habitat degradation dynamics involve several factors in concert. In the case of the deterioration of barrier islands of the coastal bend, the most dramatic decline in vegetation resulted from a prolonged period of high water that inundated the marshes of San Jose, Matagorda, and Mustang Islands from late 2015 into early 2017. This is unprecedented in modern times. And then came Hurricane Harvey, which took, among other things, acres of young eight-foot dunes from the vicinity of Cedar Bayou and Vincent Slough and deposited the sand diagonally to the area of Jaybird Point. This dynamic virtually smothered a vast area of marshland and natural channels that had evolved over decades. We can't stop the habitat loss from hurricanes or other natural impacts. But we can practice reasonable boating behavior so that we don't hasten the decline of the ecosystem, 
while giving it time to heal naturally in the aftermath. The members of Flatsworthy have pledged to lead by example in this effort to curb destructive boating behavior by steering clear of aquatic and marshland vegetation that is so vital to the stability and sustainability of the ecosystems we enjoy. Please join the movement for the sake of all Bay users. Are you Flatsworthy?